Adobe brings AI to the enterprise, ChatGPT comes to the iPad, and Meta is putting AI everywhere. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. Yes, I am losing my voice, which is a good reminder that you might want to be reading this instead of hearing it. I have a newsletter that I publish every morning at the AIbreakdown.beehive, which is spelled B-E-E-H-I-I-V.com. Now, our first story today is that in response to having the wind taken out of their sails a little bit, based on Apple's Vision Pro announced earlier this week, Mark Zuckerberg and Meta convened an all-hands meeting for the entire company. Meta has been on the ropes in many ways over the last year. It's had to have its first layoffs everywhere, and its strategy has been seen by some as sputtering. However, there's no denying they've been quietly carving a leadership position when it comes to AI, and in particular, open source AI. It feels like every other day there's some new meta open source research that we're sharing on this show. And at the All Hands yesterday, Zuckerberg gave a bit of an idea about how it all might integrate into their existing products. In short, they're going to put generative AI text, image, and video generation in everything. So, for example, people will be able to potentially text prompt to modify their own photos for Instagram, have AI with different personalities that they can engage with via Messenger and WhatsApp, and they say AI is at the core of their plans for how they imagine the future metaverse rolling out. Zuckerberg said in a statement to Axios, In the last year, we've seen some really incredible breakthroughs, qualitative breakthroughs on generative AI, and that gives us the opportunity to now go and take that technology, push it forward, and build it into every single one of our products. Another Silicon Valley-based social network that's also integrating generative AI into its products is LinkedIn. LinkedIn follows Google and Meta in putting new AI tools in their advertising suite. Basically, this is a copywriting AI support tool, and so advertisers will be able to put their initial text in a box and use AI to get different suggestions for how it might be improved to be more effective. Speaking of enterprise AI, Adobe got headlines yesterday by announcing that their Firefly AI suite was coming to the enterprise. Now, Adobe has been on an absolute AI barn burner recently, and this is no exception. Adobe's enterprise Firefly integration will allow people who use Photoshop, Illustrator, Express, and Experience Manager to modify photos directly from within those experiences. Now, the big pitch to the enterprise is that Adobe actually considers commercial viability. And what they mean by that is a couple things. First of all, they've trained their model on their own proprietary suite of stock images, so they're offering that as a better alternative to services out there, which are, for example, under lawsuit for having trained on someone else's images. And the other big piece of news is that they're planning on giving those enterprise customers an indemnification against copyright claims. I think these pretty significant steps suggest just how much interest there is in the enterprise in these new types of generative AI tools. However, it isn't only businesses and business customers that are getting new goodies in the AI realm. ChatGPT is now natively supported on iPad a couple weeks after coming to iOS in general. In addition to just iPad support, this new version of ChatGPT also has native support for Siri and shortcuts. This has many speculating about link-ups between Apple's Siri and OpenAI, but for now, it's all just rumor and innuendo. What's not rumors and innuendo is concerns about how AI software can be manipulated to give away proprietary data. Recently, researchers at Robust Intelligence announced that they had found a way to break the guardrails of an NVIDIA AI system. Their manipulations got NVIDIA, for example, to release personally identifiable information from a database, which is obviously a big concern. As the Financial Times put it, the ease with which these researchers defeated the safeguards highlights the challenges AI companies face in attempting to commercialize one of the most promising technologies to emerge from Silicon Valley for years. Another cautionary tale around AI comes from a new paper called GPT Detectors Are Biased Against Non-Native English Writers. The study was summed up by Wharton professor Ethan Mollick, who writes, You really, really shouldn't be relying on AI detectors for classroom use. This new paper shows that not only are they very easy to defeat by just prompting a couple of times, but they have insane false positive rates against non-native English speakers. Other reasons detectors don't work, he says. One, they are often trained on GPT-3.5, so GPT-4 beats them. Two, even if they alert you to potential AI use, there is no way to see that it is true. Three, students working interactively with AI defeats test, as my class found. There have been a number of high-profile stories recently that have made national press around professors or teachers falsely identifying their students as having used ChatGPT in assignments or in essays. And while I think that there's effectively going to be a never-ending spigot of capital for AI detection technology, as it seems so important, the point that this paper makes is that right now that technology is not to be trusted. Lastly today, if we started with the theme of how LLMs and AI are being customized for the enterprise, we close with a different directional trend of AI, which is to have it customized for personal use. Yesterday, Timothy Karambat writes, Announcing Anything LLM, an open source full stack app for chatting with anything. 
UI for managing documents using OpenAI, Pinecone, and Langchain. He says, first, you can find anything LLM on GitHub. No bulky CPU or GPU is required. Chatting with your documents is the hello world of LLM use cases. Why not make it more accessible? Timothy goes on. What's so special about anything LLM? No crazy system requirements runs fast and passively on your machine. Full data collection tool suite. Collect anything. Entire YouTube channels, substacks, mediums, git books, and local document processing. Persistent and usable, he says, shut down the app and start it later. All your documents, chats, and more are still present, picking up right where you left off. The database is locally saved on your machine. This is a trend that people like Brian Romley have been talking a lot about. He shared a clip from Lex Friedman's recent interview with Mark Zuckerberg and said, Private and personal AI is sweeping the world. Mark Zuckerberg admits they are using versions developed by the open source community. Now, one more very cool tool to close this show out from friend of the show, Emmett Hom, who says, the wait is over. Train a chatbot on an entire YouTube channel. YouTube to chatbot is now open source and live on GitHub. Now, obviously, as someone with multiple YouTube channels and who is interested in AI and chatbots, this is a project that I have been following closely and may have been one of the content creators that Emmett references as having talked to him behind the scenes about it. Anyways, a lot of exciting possibilities with the ability to train chatbots on YouTube channels. So excited to see that work. For now, though, guys, that is it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying, please like, subscribe, and share, and I will be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.